Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for the San Diego County Incentive Project Requirements webinar. Let's get started. Hello, my name is Nicole Appenzeller, and I'm the Cali VIP Project Manager at the Center for Sustainable Energy. I'll be moderating today's webinar and the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Divya Mother, Project Coordinator at the Center for Sustainable Energy, will be the presentation speaker today. And we have three panelists who will be participating in the question and answer session. Brian Fable will be representing the California Energy Commission. Susan Friedman will be representing the San Diego Association of Governments. And Kathleen Kean will be representing the San Diego County Air Pollution Control Districts. And all of these panelists represent our co-sponsors and co-funders for this project. To give you an overview of our agenda today, we'll plan to cover some background information on Cali VIP, provide more information on our updated 2020 project launch schedule, information on COVID-19 and how that relates to Cali VIP, and then we'll go into more detail on the San Diego County Incentive Project final requirements, including eligibility, rebate amounts, and site eligibility. And then we'll wrap up with a question and answer session where you'll have an opportunity to submit questions and answers. And we usually dedicate about an, an hour to that. So we're excited to receive your questions. Before we get started, due to high traffic, you may experience technical difficulties during this presentation. We apologize in advance for any potential delays or compromised presentation quality, but we wanna let you know that this presentation will be recorded and sent to all attendees within a week of this webinar. If you miss any part of this presentation or have any follow-up questions, please contact us at our project email at sdc calivip at energycenter.org. Also, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to use the chat box to enter in your question, as well as your name and organization, and we'll collect those, those questions and answer them during the question and answer portion of the presentation. So with that, I wanna hand it over to Divya, our speaker for today, to provide you with more information about the San Diego County Incentive Project requirements. Thank you, Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Divya Mather and I work at the Center for Sustainable Energy as project coordinator for the California Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Project or Cali VIP. Thank you for joining today's webinar presentation to learn more about the final requirements for the San Diego County Incentive Project. Funded by the California Energy Commission and implemented by the Center for Sustainable Energy, Cali VIP provides incentives for EV charger installations and works with local partners to develop and implement projects that meet current and future regional EV needs for level two and DC fast charging. Cali VIP also provides a mechanism to speed up installation, reporting, and funding processes. This project helps transform the state's access to charging infrastructure and encourages electrification. To get started, it's helpful to know the difference between Cali VIP and incentive projects. Cali VIP is a project funded through the California Energy Commission's Clean Transportation Program. Cali VIP provides regional EV charging incentives throughout California. Cali VIP has seven active incentive projects and two additional projects launching in 2020. The regions that we currently serve are Fresno County, Southern California, Sacramento County, Northern California, Central Coast, San Joaquin Valley, and Sonoma Coast. Beginning with the Sacramento County Incentive Project and onward, all projects include rebates for level two and DC fast chargers. The Cali VIP project launch schedule has been updated to provide additional project development time while maintaining Cali VIP's goal of launching two more incentive projects in 2020. The San Diego County Incentive Project will be launching next on October 27th. The landing page for this project went live yesterday, August 26th. The Peninsula Silicon Valley Incentive Project will now launch on December 16th with that landing page going live on September 16th. Before we begin covering final requirements for the San Diego County Incentive Project, I'd like to review a brief COVID-19 message. The California Energy Commission, Center for Sustainable Energy, and other organizations that support Cali VIP are informed on the effects COVID-19 has on the community. 
We understand that they, there may be utility or agency limitations during this time. Therefore, Cal EPIP is granting exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis for applicants who have extenuating circumstances during this time and are unable to meet their application expiration date. Please contact us if your project is experiencing delays. Please note that fuel providers, including electric vehicle chargers, are essential services during this time. We will communicate any changes to our policy as soon as we can. Please sign up for the Cali VIP listserv and contact the Cali VIP team if you have any questions. Now let's shift into details on the San Diego County Incentive Project, which will be launching on October 27, 2020. For the San Diego County Incentive Project, Kelly VIP is partnering with the San Diego Association of Governments and the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District to provide rebates on the purchase and installation of EV chargers on your property. The San Diego County Incentive Project has specific goals to serve disadvantaged and low-income communities. For the purposes of the project, a disadvantaged community is a community that has a census tract of 75% or higher based on the Cal Enviro Screen 3.0. A low-income community is defined as a community that has a census tract at or below 80% of the statewide median income. The San Diego County Incentive Project will have over $17 million in available funding at time of launch. This project has multiple years of funding, but DC Fast Charger funding is only available during year one. The level two funding includes SANDAG's $4.5 million investment and APCD's $1.4 million investment. We recommend that you apply as early as possible because the Cali VIP team continues to process applications as additional funds become available. Please note that a minimum of 25% of CEC and partner funding is required to be invested in DAC LIC applications in San Diego County. Now we'll shift into more details around charger installation and rebates. The general market rebate for DC fast chargers with power levels between 50 kilowatts and 99.99 kilowatts is up to $50,000. The DAC LIC rebate for this power level is up to $60,000. The general market rebate for DC fast chargers with power levels of 100 kilowatts and higher is up to $70,000. The DAC LIC rebate for this power level is up to $80,000. Level two rebates are available per connector and different sites can qualify for additional funds per connector. The base rebate for a level two connector is $4,500 per connector. Multi-unit dwelling sites qualify for an additional $1,000 per connector and DAC or LIC sites can qualify for an additional $500 per connector. Please note that there are limitations to the number of chargers that Cali VIP will rebate per site. Cali VIP can rebate up to 10 level two connectors per site and up to six DC fast chargers per site. An applicant can install additional chargers, but Cali VIP will only rebate up to these limitations. There is a rebate cap limit for any individual applicant. An applicant can have multiple applications, but the total funds reserved amount cannot exceed the active cap limit. The maximum reserved amount for an, application, an applicant's active applications in the San Diego County is $720,000. Once an application is completed and paid out, the applicant is eligible to apply for additional funds. To apply for Cali VIP rebates, an organization must be a private company, a public agency, or a tribal community and have a valid California business license. Eligible site types for DC fast charging include commercial properties, hospitals, airports, and more. Please note that to apply for curbside charging, the charger must be installed and located within the same block as another eligible site type on this list. DC fast chargers must be publicly accessible at all times and cannot be located in a gated area closed off to the public. The charger installation site must be within the project's defined regions. Eligible site types for level two charging include commercial sites, workplaces, multi-unit dwellings, and public facilities. Similar to DC fast chargers, 
level two curbside chargers must be installed and located within the same block as another eligible site type on this list. The primary difference between the eligible site types for level two chargers for San Diego County Incentive Project and other Cali VIP projects is that fleets are not eligible for rebates through the San Diego County Incentive Project. Additionally, please note that the chargers must be shared use and cannot be dedicated to a single driver or vehicle. A variety of costs are eligible for Cali VIP, including equipment and installation costs. To be eligible for Cali VIP, these costs must be incurred after funds have been reserved for your application. Design, engineering, and utility service costs are eligible if incurred starting August 24th, 2020. While many costs can be covered through Cali VIP, there are a few costs that are ineligible. Some ineligible costs include permit fees, project costs not related to the EV charger installation, and costs paid for by other rebate or incentive programs. Please contact the Cali VIP team if you are unsure if a cost is covered by the project before you apply. Site verification forms are now required for all applicants, regardless of site ownership status. You must submit the site verification form within five calendar days of application submittal. If your site verification form is not submitted in this time frame, your application will be automatically canceled. We recommend that you have the site verification form signed and completed prior to applying for funds. The site verification form verifies that you have approval from the site owner to install at the site. Here are images of the form and the necessary fields that need to be completed. The site verification form is currently available online on the project landing page. We encourage you to download the form and complete it in advance of applying. On the first page of the form, you'll need to enter information on the installation address and applicant organization. On the second page of the site verification form, you will need property owner information and valid signatures. All chargers that applicants can choose from are listed on the eligible equipment list that Cali VIP maintains and provides on the Cali VIP website. Equipment must meet certain criteria to be eligible for Cali VIP. DC fast chargers must have CHAdeMO and say CCS connector options. DC fast chargers must have a minimum of five-year networking agreement. Additionally, recent CARB regulations will begin requiring credit card readers on new charging equipment after January 1st, 2022. And there will be a 10-year 2033 requirement to add credit card readers on existing chargers that were installed before January 1st, 2022. Additionally, the DC fast chargers must be NERDL certified and they must be able to revert to an open communication protocol standard. Level two chargers must have a J1772 connector. Level two chargers must have a two year networking minimum. All level two EV chargers are required to be Energy Star certified and not just committed to becoming Energy Star certified. Please note that publicly available level two chargers that charge a fee are and are installed and open for public use on or after January 1st, 2023, will be required by law to have a credit card EMV reader on the charger or on a kiosk servicing the charger. Similar to DC fast chargers, level two chargers must be NERDL certified and must be able to revert to an open communication protocol standard. Let's review the process of applying for funding and completing your project. The rebate process is easy but different based on the equipment you apply for. For DC fast chargers or combo applications, the first step is to submit an online application and provide the signed site verification form within five calendar days. CSE will then review your application and confirm eligibility. Once eligibility is confirmed, your rebate funds are reserved for your application. Once Cali VIP confirms that funds have been reserved for your application, you will have 450 days or 15 months to complete your project. 
to avoid application cancellation, you must provide evidence of permit submittal or utility design submittal within 60 calendar days of funds reserve date. Step five consists of you uploading your documents online for CSE review. If you applied for a milestone payment, step six is the delivery of your milestone payment check. To request a milestone payment, you need to submit at least a permit, sign application form, and the design engineering invoice, but can include any other eligible costs incurred after funds have been reserved. The final step in this process to is to upload your remaining documents online and CaliVIP will complete review of the documents. Once your payment is approved, CaliVIP will issue your final check within 15 days. The process for applying for level two rebates is similar to applying for DC fast charger rebates with the main difference being that level two charger applications are not eligible for milestone payments. For level two only, an applicant has 270 days or nine months from the funds reserve date to upload all documents for final payment. Once your project is complete, submit your necessary documents. CSE will provide final review and issue your payment within 15 days of application approval. Some key items to remember when applying for your chargers is that the time to complete your project begins when your funds have been reserved. Applicants should communicate with the necessary utility provider from project start. Additionally, your chargers must be completely operational by your application deadline. Please reach out to the Cali VIP team if delays arise. Cali VIP offers complimentary technical assistance to small businesses and multi-unit dwellings in DAC, LIC, tribal and rural regions to help you get started with your EV charger installation. Submit a request at the link on the slide to get started. Some key project features include the applicant dashboard, where you can check the status of your application and submit documents. We send transaction and reminder emails that keep you up to date on timelines and due dates for your application. We also have a dedicated hotline for you to call or email with questions about your application. Kelly VIP allows self-validation for EVSPs and equipment. Equipment manufacturers can create an account which Kelly VIP will then verify. Through the website, you can submit your equipment to Kelly VIP to determine its eligibility. Once the equipment is validated, your equipment will be on the Kelly VIP eligible equipment list. While you're on the website, join Cali VIP Connects and have your business listed to help gain regional project leads. Here are some key points to keep in mind as you prepare to apply. EVSPs are allowed to apply on behalf of the property owner, but must submit a site verification form to prove that you have authority to apply. Please review the rebate caps prior to applying for funds. DC fast charger and combo applications include milestone payments and final payments, whereas level two project only, level two projects only include a single final payment. Please ensure to submit the site verification form within five calendar days of submitting an application. We will be hosting the San Diego County pre-launch webinar on October 6th in which we will cover project eligibility and provide a walkthrough of the application process. Applications will be launching on October 27, 2020. Now is the time for question and answers. Our panelists for today are Brian Fauble from the California Energy Commission, Susan Friedman from San Diego Association of Governments, and Kathleen Keehan from the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District. If you'd like to ask a question, Please submit the question in the question box feature on the GoToWebinar control panel. Please make sure to include your name and organization in the question. I'll now transition to Nicole Appenzeller, who will be moderating the Q&A. Great, thank you, Divya. As Divya mentioned, please use the chat box feature to enter your questions. I know we've received a couple of questions so far. So we'll, we'll plan to get started. 
A question from David asked, will Cali VIP provide a sample application prior to October 27th? We won't provide a sample application, but we will provide a full application walkthrough as part of our next webinar planned on October 6th. As part of that webinar, we'll walk through each step of the application and the associated fields so you can have a better understanding of what information will be required in order to apply on launch day. So thank you for your question. Next up, um, uh, Jocelyn had a question about accessibility and asked, we have a parking garage which is gated but open for public use until maybe 10 p.m. at night and is open seven days a week. So are we able to use the rebate then? And, in, and for any sites that don't have 24 seven access, you still are eligible to apply for level two chargers. Only DC fast chargers have requirements around accessibility. So for any DC fast charger eligibility through Cali VIP, the site needs to be accessible 24 hours per day, seven days a week. But for level two chargers, we don't have the same requirements. So if you have a site that is closed off for a certain number of hours per day or requires other access like a, a gate or is only available to employees or guests, then level two chargers are still eligible for those sites. But unfortunately, DC fast charger stations are, are not eligible for sites that have accessibility, that have barriers to accessibility. So thank you for your question. I'm just working through the questions. It looked like Art had a question around um, infrastructure upgrade. So I'm going to tee this up for you, Brian, um, and, and read out this question. Is there an option available for the infrastructure upgrade only? Um, installing new electrical panels dedicated to the connection of EV charging stations. Our condo complex has exclusive use parking only and no shared parking. For individuals to add EV charging at their parking spaces, the complex first needs to update the electrical system. The complex needs to add new electrical panels to isolate power dedicated solely for these chargers. Is there a program for us? So I want to turn that over to you, Brian, first, and then open it up to our other panelists as well. Sure. So in Cali VIP, um, you can upgrade existing chargers and the infrastructure required for that, but you all chart all applicants must apply and install a charger through Cali VIP. So if you're only upgrading the panels or electrical infrastructure and not the charger, that will not be eligible for Cali VIP. Um, but there may be other programs in your region um, that maybe um, Susan and Kathleen could talk about. Uh, this is Susan Friedman. SANDAC doesn't currently have a program for that, but uh, San Diego Gas and Electric, sdg &E, is planning for additional make-ready programs that your situation could fit into. So if uh, CSE could provide your information offline, we can certainly connect you with sdg &E. and Then I don't know if Kathy has additional feedback. Uh, no, I think you guys have it covered. I, I agree with your answers. Great. Thank you all for your input around that question. And if, if uh, Art, you have any other follow-up questions around that, please get in touch with us. I'll be providing our contact information after the question and answer session. So feel free to reach out and we can provide you with connections to other programming. So moving uh, forward, uh, Eduardo had a question around government facilities and asked, do government facilities qualify for the rebate such as Caltrans? And, and the answer is yes, um, so long as the, the government facility meets our site eligibility requirements and our other eligibility requirements, government facilities are eligible to apply for Cali VIP. So I encourage you to 
review our other eligibility requirements to ensure that all requirements are met um, and reach out to us if you have any follow-up questions. Um, Carl had a question around uh, Chatamo and asked, are there any moves to retire Chatamo as it appears to be going the way of Betamax? And I'll hand that one over to you, Brian, to speak to the Chatamo eligibility. Sure. So at this time, um, our requirements are staying that every charger must have the SAE and Chatamo for the fast chargers. Um, we are planning a workshop for um, September to discuss um, potential future requirement and equipment eligibilities changes um, that has not been published yet. So just make sure you're on um, all the listservs through the commission and Cali VIP. And um, I can just say stay tuned for September um, and participate to hear more information then. Great, thanks, Brian. Um, CJ had a question around condominium buildings and asked for condominium buildings with all deeded or assigned parking spaces, meaning no communal charging spaces, will they have an opportunity to apply? And as Divya mentioned, we do have requirements around shared access. The intentions for multi-unit dwellings, including condominium buildings, is that those wouldn't be assigned parking spaces and the charging spaces would be shared. So per the Cali VIP requirements, there isn't currently eligibility for deeded or assigned parking spaces. Um, and we would encourage you to see if there are any shared parking space opportunities that would allow that the site to qualify for level two chargers. Feel free to follow up with us if you want to talk through any, any follow-up questions related to your specific site that you have in mind. Thank you for that question. I'm just looking through the list. Uh, Samuel had a question around coordination and asked, what other agencies should we coordinate with to have everything permitted once the funds are reserved? And I'll, I'll uh, ask Brian to support that question and then open it up to the rest of our panelists. Sure. So. Permitting is um, done by your local jurisdiction, which is usually um, an incorporated city, or if you live in an unincorporated city, it usually falls to the county. So you would need to check uh, first. Usually it's with your building um, officials, building office, um, and they may have additional requirements on where you need to go. But um, a lot of these questions as well, when you're selecting your equipment, um, you know, they're always a good resource. The EVSPs, the service providers, um, may have help with contractors um, in your area, as well as um, our Cali VIP Connects will have contractors. And the contractors usually um, can help you out with that permitting um, steps and procedures as well but definitely definitely your city or your county uh, building department will be the first step to look at. Uh, to add to what Brian's saying, uh, something that we didn't cover with today's webinar, but uh, SANDAG was asking CSE or funding CSE to provide some additional trainings before the launch date to the local governments on permit streamlining so that the process is uh, made easier for everyone that is applying. And we're also coordinating with SDG&E, the local utility, and hope to have an FAQ sheet also for how to coordinate the process of the Cali VIP application and installations with the utility. Great, thank you both for uh, responding to that question. Thank you uh, for all of your questions. I'm making my way through through the list and encourage you to, to keep asking questions. Uh, so I uh, had a question around publicly available chargers. Um, does publicly available chargers include their placement in paid public parking lots? And, and for Cali VIP, it does. So if there is, um, say, a gate or a, 
a barrier um, for a paid parking lot that can be accessed with money, uh, then we count that as, as accessible and um, that site would be eligible uh, for DC fast chargers. So if you're, look, if you're thinking about installing at a paid parking lot, um, we would consider that publicly available. And if you have any other questions uh, related to a specific site or uh, a different access level, please feel free to reach out and, and ask our project team in advance so we can give you guidance on what eligibility that site has. So thank you for that question. Uh, another question came in around uh, vendors and asked, is the applicant free to select all vendors or is there an approved vendor list applicants must use? For Cali VIP, there is not an approved vendor list that you must use, but we do have resources available. So if you are planning a project for the first time, we encourage you to check out our Cali VIP Connects tool that's available on our website at calievip.org. Uh, the Cali VIP Connects tool is a tool that you can use to enter in search results. So if you're looking for an electrician, um, an ele electric vehicle service provider, or some other um, type of partner to, to get your project started, you can enter in those, those search fields as well as the region that you're looking at. So for this project, it would be San Diego County. And we have a list of available resources. So we've been collecting data on um, project uh, vendors and, and different participants through the installation cycle so that we have information available. So if you want to connect with someone, you have the ability to do so, but there are no requirements on who you work with for Cali VIP. There are some requirements um, that, of course, you uh, meet a California prevailing wage and uh, meet other requirements on um, completing installations uh, properly so feel free to review our requirements around that um, but that just goes for any charger installation and if you have any questions or are looking for more information on cali vip connects uh, feel free to reach out to our team or take a look at the link that divya provided earlier in, in this presentation when we make the presentation available later today to all of you yeah, Nicole, if I can add to that, um, thank you for definitely calling out the prevailing wage. That's one. Um, with all Cali VIP projects, um, you know, we state in all the implementation manuals that you must follow all state, federal, and local laws or ordinances. So the main one is obviously um, using a C10 electrical um, con electrician. Um, and also there are other you know jurisdictions usually cities that might have additional requirements on you know certifications on what type of labor you use um, so definitely just when you're doing that permitting um, aspect it's important to make sure that um, you know you're following all your local laws as well as the state and federal um, you know the state has the accessibility guidelines for um sizing and painting your stalls as well um, the other vendor aspect i guess that was previously addressed is also the eligible equipment um, the chargers must be on our current eligible equipment list to be able to um, get a rebate if you have a charger company in mind that is not on there um, i definitely recommend reaching out to um, CSE to see if they are eligible or having that vendor reach out as um, any company or any manufacturer will be allowed to be eligible if they meet all of our requirements. And so this is not um, Cali VIP selecting these chargers. This is just verifying that these chargers and companies meet our requirements. Great, thanks for adding on that additional detail, Brian. Um, I've seen uh, quite a few questions around the rebate levels for fast chargers. Um, so wanted to, to bring that up. Uh, again, we will be making these slides available after 
uh, this presentation. So we'll be emailing all webinar registrants and attendees with a copy of these slides and then following up um, with a recording of this presentation uh, soon after, after it's available. But for the fast charger rebates, we have two different funding levels and that's based on the DC fast charger power level. So for DC fast chargers that have a power level between 50 kilowatts and 99.99 kilowatts, the general market rebate is up to $50,000 or 75% of the total project cost, whichever is less. Now that rebate increases for DAC and LIC rebates and is up to $60,000 or 75% of the total project cost, whichever is less. For higher powered DC fast chargers that are 100 kilowatts and up, the general market rebate is up to $70,000 or 75% of the total project cost, whichever is less. And the DAC LIC rebate is up to $80,000 per charger or 75% of the total project cost, whichever is less. So the overall uh, idea is if it's a higher powered charger, it's going to be eligible for a higher value rebate. And then there are increased rebates available for disadvantaged and low income communities. And, and that difference is it's um, up to, to $10,000 higher for these DC fast charger categories. So if you have any uh, follow-up questions, uh, please reach out and, and we can provide you with more information on what your estimated rebate would look like based on your specific site information. But thanks for all of your questions around uh, the rebates. Uh, Marty had a question um, around K through 12 schools and asked, uh, uh, you know, if uh, K to 12 schools can install level two chargers on school grounds. And I think um, when it comes to schools, we know that there might be some ac accessibility um, differences, but schools are eligible for level two chargers. Um, so meaning that the sites do not have to be available to the public 24 seven. And if you have any follow-up questions around uh, making a charger installation happen at one of your school sites, please feel free to, to reach out to us. And we can provide you with more assistance and, and direction uh, to get your project started. Um, so just kind of going through the list, we've got a lot of great questions. Um, Jim asked, how is this program different from the Power Your Drive program? And I'd like to hand it over to, to Brian um, to start with the answer on that question. Sure. <laughs> Excuse me. So um, I don't have that readily available on comparisons. So um, I'll actually have to um, pass this to Susan, who I think can answer it a little better than I can at this time. Sure. Thanks, Brian. So SDG&E's Power Your Drive program, or the the 1.0 that is over right now, that focused on um, fleets as well as multi-unit dwellings and it was generally for installations of 10 chargers or more of level two chargers and so the focus with cali vip is on those smaller sites and for um, providing rebates for under 10 level two chargers and our focus is on the public infrastructure uh, as well as workplace infrastructure and so we are collaborating with sdg and &E on their future versions of Power Your Drive as well, and so that we prepare some complementary programs to offer a wider variety of rebates and make ready in the region. But the key differences were um, in the number of rebates, as well as the, the focus with Power Your Drive is fleets and multi-unit dwellings, and we're in the more public charging focus shared use situations. Great, thank you, Susan. Um, Kevin had a question uh, in two parts uh, and asked, and I'm gonna uh, ask for some support from Brian on this question. 
So his first question was, does serving as a site host and not the primary, the prime contractor for a CEC EPIC grant for demonstration purposes constitute receiving energy commission funding for EV charging infrastructure? So that's the first question. And then the follow-up question was, may a university serving as a site host to a CEC EPIC grant for demo purposes that expires on 12-31-20 apply for the same site um, with the provision that no funds will be spent at this site until the site host agreement has expired? So I will give, let's go to um, basically any site or, yeah, any site that is involved in receiving any energy commission funds from any source, um, whether it's the Clean Transportation Program or EPIC. Um, the funds for Cali VIP cannot um, be commingled with any additional energy commission funds. So if this is to do above and beyond um, other energy commission projects, um, I would say it would be eligible, but it cannot be to do existing work or planned agreements or be utilized as match for any other contract or agreement with the Energy Commission. Again, it must be separate and additional chargers and infrastructure. And I'd actually ask you to um, just send me maybe in the email with that, uh, your specific project and information, um, and I can give you a more verified um, answer later after we look into that, but um, that is typically the requirement with um, Cali VIP is that you cannot commingle funding with any other Energy Commission project and that it must be separate. Thanks, Brian. And as he mentioned, if you want to reach out with more information about your particular case, please reach out to our team and we can put you in touch with Brian for next steps. Uh, Hillary asked, does SANDAG have a Cal Enviro screen map that shows the census tracts in cities that meets the program requirement? So I can hand that over to you, Susan. Um, yes, we do have some maps. I don't think we have them on our website yet, but uh, we could follow up and make sure that we provide those to the Cali VIP page as well as updating our own website. We have some graphics of both the LIC areas and, uh, and DAC areas of the county. But there's also links from the front of this presentation to Cal Enviro screen directly. Um, where you can look from that website and drill down to San Diego County and, and see which um, locations are part of or qualify in that. Thanks, Susan. And just to add to that, we encourage you to check out the Cal Enviro screen tool with that link that's provided on this presentation. You can enter in your address or the site address to, to see what the what the designation is and if you have any questions or a specific site address that you're thinking about you can always reach out to our team to verify what rebate level that site would qualify for Um, Chad had a question uh, about the San Diego uh, International Airport and asked, we have a gated garage, it's open 24-7 and, and there is a grace period for payment. After that grace period, there's a charge for parking. Would it be an eligible site for both level two and DC fast chargers? Um, generally for airports, uh, we um, do not support uh, longer term parking for DC fast chargers. So we want to follow up um, to understand more about the duration of, of the parking uh, and find out there in order to determine the DC fast charger eligibility status. But for level two charging, uh, that would generally be eligible uh, for an airport 
So if you have more information that you can provide to our project team about the type of parking uh, for this, this parking garage, um, please let us know and we can determine if it would be an eligible site for DC fast charging. So thanks for your question, Chad. There were a couple questions about uh, payment. So uh, I'd like to cover a, a couple of these questions now. Um, so a question from Arthur was, for the individual using the charger, is payment through credit card only? So uh, payment is not required uh, for eligibility. You could choose to make the charging free, and that is up to the decision uh, of, of the owner um, or operator. So Cali VIP doesn't have a requirement around whether or not a payment is required for charging. But if a payment is required, we do require you to provide um, two types of payment, one being uh, through credit card. So if you are planning to have a payment method for the charger, um, you need to make one uh, available via credit card and that can work in, in different ways, either a credit card reader or you know, mobile apps. So if you have any questions as you're thinking about setting up payment options for the charger, please feel free to reach out and we can provide you with more direction. But overall, if you are planning to charge for use of the charger, and then uh, it needs to have at least two forms of payment, one being a credit card payment. And, and that can look different uh, you know, through an app or, or a credit card reader. So let us know if you have any follow-up questions around that. Uh, another question around condo buildings was if a condo building were to set aside a certain number of spaces to be shared EV charging spaces, would they then qualify? Um, we need to make sure that they meet all other eligibility requirements. Um, but overall, if there are shared shared spaces as part of that multi-unit dwelling, then a uh, multi-unit dwelling could be a candidate for level two charging. Um, as we've discussed before, uh, DC fast chargers are not eligible for multi-unit dwellings. Uh, so if, if you have any questions uh, around your particular site, feel free to follow up and we can provide you with a little bit more direction. But we encourage you to review all of the eligibility requirements to make sure that all of those other requirements are met uh, in order to determine if your site qualifies for level two charging rebates. There was a question around uh, fleet eligibility and uh, someone asked, is the program available for a city fleet? And for this project, our funding is focused on passenger vehicles and public charging. So fleets are not eligible for the San Diego County Incentive Project. And want to open it up to our panelists if you have any other information you'd like to share around the decision um, around fleet eligibility for this project. Hi, Nicole. I think you covered that well, but it's really the source of our funding is for an action out of Sandeg's Sustainable Community Strategy, and that is focused on public charging infrastructure and the shared use and for passenger vehicles. Uh, uh, as an SCS measure. It's something we're going to look at again in our future regional plan to see if there's considerations for a wider eligibility, but for now that's where our funding comes from. Great. Thanks, Susan. There have been a couple questions around the difference between a level two charger and a DC fast charger. So I'd like to ask for support from Brian on explaining some of those differences. Sure. So um, the first difference is what vehicles can really use um, each charger. So um, a level two charger typically uses a J1772 connector, which um, all battery electric vehicles will um, have. And by all, I would say all non-Teslas, Tesla has their own standard, but um, all other cars will have a port that can utilize a J1772 connector, um, as well as plug-in hybrid um, vehicles. 
now the DC fast chargers come, um, the vehicles come in multiple connectors. There's the SAE CCS combo uh, connector, and there's the Chatamo connector. The SAE is usually done um, utilized by American and European um, car models, while the Chatamo is Japanese and Korean uh, for the time being. And so knowing what your cars or your um, audience you want to serve um, is the difference there. The next is obviously the power level. Um, the level two connectors or chargers, uh, we require ours have a minimum power capability of 6.2 kilowatts. Um, and those typically can increase up to um, about 19.9 kilowatts. Um, but those are um, slower compared to a fast charger that is obviously going to use a lot more power um, as the name uh, provides fast and those range for eligibility of at least 50 kilowatts up to about 350 kilowatts so what does that mean for timing um, typically uh, it will depend on the car's battery but a level two charger generally can give maybe on average 12 miles of range per hour of charging compared to a fast charger that you might be able to get um, you know 80 percent of your battery charge in about 30 minutes is typical um, so you got power level um, difference the cost obviously is going to be greatly different for fa higher for fast chargers and then you have the connectors as well and there should be resources online as well um, on the energy or on the Cali VIP website under resources. Um, really, I think it's called EV charging, electric vehicle charging 101, that will go further into that analysis of describing level one, which is not eligible for Cali VIP, and then level two and DC fast chargers. So there's a whole document available that expands on that brief description. Great. Thanks, Brian, for, for that answer. And as a follow-up, someone had asked, how can I determine you know, which charger type works for my site? So can you, can you start by providing an answer on that? And then I want to open it up to the rest of the panelists. Sure. So we actually have um, another resource just for that question on the um, Cali VIP website under resources uh, resources for property owners it's really talking about exactly that question how many chargers where should i put the chargers what are the best chargers um, for my site use and etc so um, i'd recommend you go in there but quickly for an answer um, it depends on your site type and your audience if you are a site type that has long dwell times um, if you're a workplace or if you're a shopping mall and a movie theater um, other restaurants possibly um, a, sit a site type where you might expect your audience or customers to be staying for generally at least over an hour or more um, a level two is going to be the the better bet you're, you're going to have people stay in there they have a better charge time again if uh, level two on average you give you 12 mi miles of charge um, per hour so um, if they're going to be spending a lengthy amount of time that's going to be the cheaper and better option um, but if you are well, also like hotels that's a good one for level twos um, but if you're something where you're um, not expecting someone really to stay over an hour, um, a fast charger is going to be better because um, it's similar to a gas station where someone's just coming here, they want the fast charger or they need the fast charger to get a lot of miles in a short amount of time. And so um, grocery stores, um, maybe a clothing outlet or um, anything that, you know, again, under an hour of wait time. Um, a fast charger might be good and fast chargers also um, you know attract people where 
they again they they're coming to these fast chargers because they likely need the charge and then they're going to be looking to kill some time while their vehicle's charging and so you might generate more business because people don't like to sit in their cars especially um, maybe up here in sacramento it's different because it can get up to 110 degrees sometimes i don't want to sit in the car and when it's 100 degrees you're going to want to kill some time the level two chargers they're not really looking to use the charger because they need to but it's really a nice convenience to them that hey i'm going here oh and i can get some miles added to my vehicle thanks brian for more information on that and it, as brian mentioned we encourage you to check out some of our resources on the Cali VIP website. We have resources specific to planning your installation. So if you're taking those first steps to figure out what type of chargers might work for your site, we have some resources available there, as well as some technical assistance offerings that we'll be providing. So feel free to, to reach out and get in touch with us with your questions, and we can provide you some direction and resources on next steps. Great. So, um, Moving through the, the list of questions, someone asked, once application submission is open, can we upload in batches if a single customer has multiple sites? And the answer is no. You need to submit one application per site. And we ask that if you are installing level two and DC fast chargers at the same site, you need to just submit one application. There's no need to submit two applications for the same site. Um, so you can submit one application per site and you'll be able to select all of the equipment that you'll be planning to install at that site. I think if you are uh, looking at a single customer that has multiple sites, uh, we encourage you to get started now on the site verification form. That's something that you can do work on and complete in advance of launch and that can just help streamline the application process so you can upload that as soon as you apply online. And, and that will be one less thing that you have to do um, to complete your application or follow up on. Um, so thank you for that question. And please reach out if you have any other questions about balancing um, multiple sites. Uh, another question um, was around the timeline for notification of approval post application, i.e. How long are you waiting for applications um, before allocating funds? So uh, for our application process, um, the way that it, it works, and as Divya explained, you'll submit an online application, and then you'd have up to five days to submit your site verification form. If you do not submit that site verification form, your application will be automatically canceled. But once we receive that site verification form, from you, then we have all we need to start our initial verification process. And um, based on the volume of applications, um, delays may be experienced, but that can typically take um, up to 20 days for us to complete the initial verification of your process and follow up with you. So during that in initial verification phase, before funds are reserved, uh, we ask that you do not do any other work. Um, it's very important for you to wait until funds have been reserved for your application before moving forward because we want to make sure that you have a funding reservation before you incur any other costs. So during that initial verification period, we'll review all of the information that you've submitted via the online application, and then we'll follow up if we have any questions around your eligibility or if we have a need to complete any missing or incomplete information. So that's a, a typical timeline. Once we have determined that you are eligible and re reviewed your application, we will send you a notification letting you know that funds have been reserved. We'll identify the rebate amount that has been reserved for your application and let you know that you can now take next steps to complete your project. That's kind of when the clock starts and, and that's when that um, completion period starts. So you can begin um, taking next steps and we'll have the ability to upload documents um, over time as they become available through our applicant portal. And um, as Divya mentioned, as part of our next pre-launch webinar, we will provide you with a step-by-step -step 
overview of the full application process so you can have a better understanding of what to expect for your online application and ask any questions you have around application. So thanks for those questions. Uh, someone had a question around um, private master plan communities and asked, are private master plan communities eligible for this program where the primary users would be the residents and their guests? And uh, I want to kick that, that question over to Brian for support and answering. So I would say maybe. Um, again, you're likely going to be eligible for um, level two chargers that are installed at a shared use area um, for your um, residents. Um, I guess we would need to see more of what your master community includes if you have um, a lot I'm even thinking about it, if it's you know gated and restricted only to your residents and you have businesses in there that meet our fast charger um, eligibility, I would say it still likely would not be eligible because a fast charger has to be open to the full public. And if the full public doesn't have access, then they will not be able to be eligible. But for the level twos, those can be public or private. So if again the l2 is installed at a common use shared area you may be eligible but as um, csc stated before definitely with special um, questions reach out to csc to um, get further confirmation on site eligibility prior to applying great thanks for that answer brian and, and I think that holds true for any type of site. If you have unique questions around your site eligibility and, and don't see a clear answer with our requirements, please reach out to us. We're happy to talk through the specifics of your site to pr provide you with information on your eligibility. So you know that in advance of applying and have a clear understanding of, of your site eligibility before filling out that online application. Another. Um, uh, webinar participant asked, what is the contact within SDG&E to find out more about new infrastructure for condo buildings? So I want to open that up to our, our partners in the San Diego region and ask if SANDAG um, or San Diego County Air Pollution Control District teams have any recommendations on contacts at SDG&E to find out about infrastructure for condos. Um, I think Kathy can uh, follow up here too. I'd say there's been some turnover at SDG&E uh, recently, so I don't want to give a specific name online now, but we could um, speak with them and post some email information there, uh, unless Kathy is thinking of someone in particular. No, I was going to do that same answer that um, I think we'd like to get back to you with who the appropriate people at SDG&E would be to talk to. In the meantime, I think you can go to the SDG&E website and I think they do have some information there as well. So, but we'll try to find a, a direct contact for folks who are participating in Cali VIP. Great. So um, for the individual that asked that question, if you could follow us up with us directly after this presentation. We're happy to get you connected with any resources we have at, at sdg &E to follow up um, with those questions. So please feel free to reach out to us. And again, after this question and answer session, I'll be reviewing all of our contact information and, and next steps on sharing uh, this webinar presentation. So more information to come on that. Uh, there was a question, um, if the program does not receive projects that expend the DAC LIC segment, will those funds be distributed or retained and held? And uh, it, the intent of the DAC LIC minimum is to have those funds go to, to projects um, within those regions. So what we've typically seen um, in our programming is we have seen uh, interest in an uptake in 
rebate reservations for those regions. So we would plan to, to hold those funds in the event that those funds um, have, there hasn't been any demand for those funds, then uh, we may reassess uh, distribution of those funds. But our intention right now is to keep those funds uh, allocated to DAC and LIC sites. Great. So Chad had a question about marketing and asked, how is this project being marketed regionally? So I can start with a, a short answer and then open it up to our panelists to add more information on what we're doing in terms of marketing. But um, for um, marketing, we will be providing our uh, standard uh, webinars uh, as well as um, doing email marketing, digital marketing, uh, and marketing versus social media. In addition, uh, we are exploring opportunities to do um, some uh, virtual uh, events or uh, trainings specifically around uh, technical assistance and EVITP. And I can kick it over to our panelists to provide more information about those offerings. Sure, um, I can say at least through Sandeg and APCD, you've talked about this and Kathy can go over some of the a APCD specific ones, but uh, other, in addition to going before like our policy committees and board of directors to inform local governments, we also are planning the uh, educational webinar for local governments and um, for permit check folks and building officials. We're planning outreach to local electricians through CSE uh, to do a kind of a keying up webinar pre-launch for EVITP training, as well as budgeting for a couple EVITP trainings a year. Uh, and we're working through that through CSE. Um, and then with the EV expert assistance, the technical assistance, we're doing a heavy focus on assistance for low income and disadvantaged community uh, installations. So we'll be reaching out to our community-based organizations in the region, and we have a CBO working group that we'll be going out to, uh, as well as local chambers of commerce. Uh, and then if different groups request presentations locally, we'll also be happy to provide them. And, uh, and Kathy with APCD is on most of these things together. Uh, but I'll turn it over to her for things that I'm missing as well. Um, sure. Yeah, I think you covered a lot of the high points. Um, some of the other avenues that we're going to be using for outreach are, of course, our, um, we'll be doing direct marketing to um, emails out to our um, interest list, anybody who's expressed an interest in electric vehicles or EV charging. We're certainly sending out those emails. We're going out on social media with, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn and on Facebook. Um, we are doing some specific outreach, at least at the Air District, through our AB 617 efforts um, in the disadvantaged communities to, to try and make sure that folks in those communities know about this program as well. Uh, we're happy to hear about more opportunities to get the word out. So if people have suggestions for um, groups that they know that they think would be interested, um, we'd be happy to hear that and try and follow up with them. Great, thank you both. And and we are continuing to you know evolve our our marketing. So uh, typically we would also provide some in person marketing, but given the COVID landscape, you know we're we're looking to connect uh, and market this project in, in different ways. So uh, I'll provide more information on how you can subscribe to to the Cali VAP newsletter. Just so you can keep in touch with what we're doing around marketing and find out more information um, for future trainings uh, as they become available. So stay tuned for more information on, on how you can get connected as a Cali VIP subscriber. Um, someone had a question around um, Cali VIP Connects and asked, how can a company be placed in 
um, Cali VIP Connects, can design engineering companies be part of these vendors? And the answer is yes. You can um, provide your information uh, at the Cali VIP Connects link. So I, we've I included that link in this presentation that will be made available and um, invite you to go to calivip.org um, to get started there in our menu. You can find more information on Cali VIP Connects by going to Get Started and going to Cali VIP Connects. There you can look up um, any vendors as well as list your own business. So uh, you can click the list your business link and fill out a form to supply us with your information. What we'll do is we'll do a short review to make sure that all information um, is complete and, and then we will take next steps to post that information through Cali VIP Connects. So please follow up to, to have your business listed as well. Um, there were a couple questions around ADA parking space requirements. So I'm gonna cue this up for you, Brian, and um, ask, are there ADA parking space requirements in order to qualify for Cali VIP? So, to take that question that how it's written, um, it's not to qualify, but any back to the statement that um, all installations must follow federal, state, local laws. There are um, laws from the division state architect um, that dictates codes on um, ADA sizing and striping and posting signage. And um, they are going under revisions, but typically right now, if you install um, any chargers and your site has the ability to charge one to four vehicles, you must um, have once, excuse me, <clears throat> one space sized at a van accessible space, which is um, a, a width description as well as an accessible aisle. And if you go higher than one to four um, charging spaces, and it's I think five to 20, then you must have that van accessible as well as a standard accessible and your van accessible site or, or space must be um, blue, the normal handicap restricted. So I recommend just definitely um, researching with DSA. I don't know if we have a resource um, going over the ADA on Cali VIP's website but it is a pretty um, simple thing to find. Um, we do have a resource um, about the EV charging station permitting guidebook, um, which is implemented and created by GoBiz. It's a very um, helpful resource. And in this guidebook, um, they will address the, or they do address the ADA accessibility sizing and requirements. And so, um, I'll correct myself that we do technically have that resource available on our page. Again, it would be go into Cali VIP's website, resources, and then EV charging station permitting guidebook. Um, and that again is done by GoBiz and will give you the details you need. And your permitting jurisdiction should also um, be able to help you as well as most EV service providers. Great, thanks for providing more information on that, Brian. Um, another attendee asked, overall, will this be a first come first serve incentive award process? And, and the answer is yes. For all of our Cali VIP uh, incentive projects, applications are handled on a first come first serve basis. So we'll be taking into account our available funding amounts as well as um, different factors like the disadvantaged um, community or low income community status uh, as we process applications on a first come first serve basis. As a result, we do encourage you to uh, plan in advance um, so that you can be ready to apply on the day of launch. 
And there's certain steps that you can take now, like filling out the site verification form and completing that in advance. So that's one less thing you have to do and you'd be ready to submit that right after submitting your online application. If we also encourage folks that have any questions around the eligibility of their site to reach out to us in advance of launch so that we can provide you with guidance and information on what your site eligibility is so you have a clear picture and know what to expect before applying to the project. So thank you for that question. And if I can add to that a little, Nicole, um, she did you did a good job at saying, you know, we're really looking for you to be ready, do as much work as possible. So um, other things around that um, are definitely if you have to secure funding or if you're a public agency looking to, um, you know, do a RFP or et cetera, um, you might want to start that work now because um, what we've experienced is that does take a lot of time and here at the commission we know those take a lot of time as well and once you're if you do get funds reserved and then start that process you're likely not going to complete your project in time especially if it's a level two and you only have nine months to complete and um, typically that is not an excuse or a granted uh, justification for extensions that we are looking for projects to apply that are ready to move forward as soon as funds are reserved. And to justify that as well, we do have um, a checkpoint review for all of our applications now, both level two and fast chargers, where once your funds are reserved, you have a milestone, uh, I believe two months, to upload either your permit submittal proof or your utility application um, submittal and if that has not been uploaded then your application will be under review and um, you'll kind of have you know a discussion with CSE to see why you are unable to meet this deadline and um, if there's you know not confidence or if it can't happen soon then your application will be canceled because again we are looking for projects that are ready to get to work and install chargers we're trying to avoid um, sites or applications that want to secure funding and then make their plans um, to rather have installations happen sooner and faster. Great, thanks Brian. Um, there's a question that I wanted to open up to uh, Susan and Kathleen around uh, programs or, or funds specifically available for historic sites or rehabilitation projects. Um, someone asked if we're aware of any funds or rebates specifically for those those types of sites, a historic site or a rehab project. Um, I'm not aware of any, but I think I'd probably need a little more information because if it falls within the eligibility criteria of Cali VIP, then it would count but um yeah if they want to provide some additional information i don't know kath um i don't think good i'm i'm not sure what they mean by historic uh sites at this point um I, i'm thinking they may be meaning we had chargers they're no longer functioning for one reason or another could we qualify for cal e vip uh, funding for those sites, and I think the answer to that is yes. Um, but if it if it has a different, if you're meaning it like in the traditional historic resource uh, site, I don't think we have any specific language calling out those sites specifically one way or the other. Yeah, and just to add there um, to Kathy's point, yes, if you have a site that has um, existing charging, you can still be eligible for Cali VIP if you meet um, our other eligibility requirements. We don't have any specific uh, requirements or differences for a, a historic site. So if you have a historic home or um, building uh, that, that you're thinking about 
we don't have any specifics for Cali VIP, but welcome you to provide a little bit more information ar around your site. And uh, thanks, I just saw a, a comment from um, Jabari on this asking about um, historic buildings. And I'm not familiar with any additional funds or rebates that are available. Uh, but uh, is there anything else um, from our panelists on the line or Brian, do you have any awareness for any historic building incentives or funds that are available for EV charging? Um, I am not aware of any specific program that only funds historic buildings. Great. So we've we've got your contact information, Jabari. So if we do uh, come across anything, then um, we're, we can uh, reach out and share that information um, for you. Uh, moving forward to another question, Paul had a question about car sharing. So I'd like to cue this up for you, Brian. And um, Paul said, you know, would EV car sharing be eligible? to use this program in MUDs, we would use the electric vehicle charging infrastructure for a single vehicle, but the vehicle would be shared across the MUD community and multiple community members. We have interest in Envoy's EV car sharing throughout the region and Cali VIP would be ideal to support our deployment. Yeah, so um, I apologize that this has been on our radar um, on this exact use case and I don't think we've made an official decision yet. So um, I'll just queue it up for us to have further internal discussions around this. Um, and if you can send your contact information to CSE, um, we'll try and get back to you. And if we do decide to make changes on the eligibility, um, we'll see if we can implement that um, in the implementation manual for this project or the next or future. So um, all I can say is we'll we'll try to address it. Great, thanks for that information, Brian. And we can um, follow up directly with you, Paul, uh, for further discussion around uh, car sharing eligibility. And if there are any changes in requirements for this project or for any of our projects, we'll, we uh, will share that information with our subscriber group and through the implementation manual of the project. So um, stay tuned. If if there are any changes in the future, we'll make sure to make to share that information publicly so everyone is aware of any requirement changes. Uh, so then another um, attendee asked, who are your target applicants? Does IOU customer status impact eligibility? And for this project, um, IOU or um, utility customer status does not impact eligibility. There are no requirements to access funds um, or requirements for um, specific utility customers. For uh, this project, um, just like, our other projects, our target applicants are uh, for public charging. So public accessibility is important for Cali VIP, but we also do understand that certain site types cannot always um, provide public access. So um, some key uh, communities that we are looking to work with and provide extended technical assistance in are disadvantaged and low income communities. So those are some of our target um, audiences uh, in terms of our charger installations and our support and outreach ahead of launch. Uh, but overall, our, our target applicants are uh, public uh, public sites, uh, commercial sites, uh, workplace and multi-unit dwelling sites, as well as um, government facilities are eligible. So. Um, there aren't any requirements around utility status or utility eligibility. If you are familiar with some of our past projects, we ask about utilities as part of the online application. But for the San Diego County Incentive Project, there are no utility requirements um, around eligibility. So we have 
uh, uh, no requirements that you need to meet there. So thanks for your question. Uh, so that there was um, there were some questions around card readers, um, spe specifically around charger payments. So for the chargers with card re readers, where are the funds routed to the business? Um, that is up to you um, to determine. Uh, Cali VIP doesn't have any requirements about where those funds are routed. Again, we don't require um, you to charge for use of the chargers, but if you do, we require at least two forms of payment. So folks have options in terms of how they pay to use the charger, and one of those options must be, uh, must accept credit card. But ultimately it's up to the owner operator, um, and there are different structures available that you can choose. So based on um, your level of interest, you can choose to have that go directly to the site owner or the, the charger owner or operator. So that's up to your discretion and there are no Cali VIP requirements on, on where the, the funds go. For public access to DC fast chargers, we've received a question asking, are there any requirements of um, having a DC fast charger be within a certain distance to retail facilities? So we have a, a list of eligible DC fast charger sites and overall the intention is to have DC fast chargers located in, in sites that are accessible um, and uh, that are, are close to some of, of um, these high traffic areas such as uh, retail shopping centers, grocery stores, hospitals, airports, casinos, et cetera. So if the site itself it does not qualify for one of those, as one of those site types, um, then curbside charging is also an eligible site type. And the only proximity requirement there is it need to be within a block of one of our eligible DC fast charger sites. So if your site is not a retail shopping center itself, um, but it, it is um, on the curb, for instance, it just needs to be within one block of that retail shopping center. So if you have a site address in mind and have any questions about the eligibility, I invite you to follow up with our project staff and provide us with that, that installation address and we can determine your eligibility and verify that in advance of you applying. There's another question around network provider. The question was, are there any restrictions on network provider? And, and there are not. Uh, for network provider, that is ultimately the site's choice or the applicant's choice on who to select for the network provider. It is a requirement to have a network provider for your installation and because a network agreement is a requirement. A two-year network agreement a, excuse me, a two-year network agreement is required for all level two chargers and a five-year network agreement is required for all DC fast chargers in order um, to meet the eligibility requirements of Cali VIP. So as part of your online application, we will ask you if you have selected a network provider. That's just to that is one of our required questions, but at time of application, you don't have to have a network provider selected. If anything, we want to include that as part of the application so you can start to think about that since that will be a requirement to complete your installation. So we do have um, an available list as part of our application so you can get an understanding of those network providers. And that's also something that's featured as part of Cali VIP Connect. So if you're starting to think about network providers and want to find out more information about uh, your options, feel free to utilize the Cali VIP Connects tool to see which network providers are available uh, for your installation and, and follow up to maybe get some quotes. And thanks yeah. for that question. What I would add to that as well is part of the networking agreement and the application requirements, terms and conditions is data collection on those chargers. That's why the networking agreement's there as well. Um, that the site 
applicant must um, submit data um, utilization data from these chargers for the length of those networking agreements two years for level two five years for fast chargers and um, you know making sure that your network provider has the capability of collecting that data and there's easier ways to get it done as well where the terms and conditions um, by signing you're giving CSE um, access to the utilization data of those chargers no personal information just really the session usage data and by most networks um, CSE can go directly to them and get that information but if um, that network doesn't really have the full capabilities of um, sharing it will be up to the site hosts to be responsible for making sure that information gets submitted to CSE. Thanks for that additional information, Brian. Uh, Matt had a question around eligibility and asked, are apartment developments that are 20% affordable at 50% of area median income eligible for rebates? And overall, I would say uh, multi-unit dwelling. So, uh, and we define those as a community that has three or more units. Um, are eligible for level two chargers through Cali VIP. So uh, at a baseline, apartments are typically eligible. But um, for this, um, the specific statistics that you included um, around the site, we would invite you to reach out uh, and provide more information on your site address or uh, addresses that you're considering so that we can provide you with information on uh, their qualifications. I'm not familiar with um, these specific uh, rates that you're including here, but what we can do with your installation address is verify if you qualify for any additional incentives uh, as a disadvantaged or uh, low income community. So we invite you to, to follow up with your address and we can provide a verification of your eligibility. Uh, there was a question from Brian asking, if number of connectors changes during the course of the project, can we contact you and revise the application? And the answer is yes. If, if you are, and this relates to another question, um, which was, if both level two and DC fast chargers are desired for a site, but DC charger eligibility is questionable, would you suggest that an application is submitted for both? Would the level two charger approval be hindered in any way? And, and uh, for any type of equipment, if you are planning to install DC fast charger and level two connectors, we ask that you apply for the maximum uh, number of chargers or connectors you plan to install. We understand that over the process, you might make changes to the equipment, but for the purposes of reserving your funds, it's very important for you to apply for the maximum number that you are initially planning because we cannot make any adjustments uh, or increases up um, after you've applied, but we can always uh, make an adjustment in, or reduce the number of other technologies you've applied for or the number of connectors or chargers that you've applied for. So, for example, if you are considering um, you know, installing 10 level two connectors on your site, we uh, encourage you to apply for the full 10. Now, during the first months of your project, if you find out that the funding is not going to work out or uh, the site will only be able to accommodate six level two connectors, then at that point, we would ask you to follow up with us so we can make that change to your application and we would adjust your application to reflect the new number of level two connectors. We cannot adjust up though. Um, and as Brian ha has mentioned previously, we are, uh, our intent is to incentivize ready to start projects. So we 
um, want you to do some initial planning to consider how many chargers you would be installing, um, but we know that sometimes those estimations are off. So if there's any doubt um, in number of connectors, uh, we ask that you uh, apply for the, the max number that you would be considering, and we can always make an adjustment later on in the process if you need to adjust down. And then just to um, confirm, if both level two and DC chargers are desired for a site, uh, you should apply for both um, with one application. If in the event that eligibility is in question, we ask that you get in touch with us in advance. Um, we're happy to verify your eligibility in advance of you applying. I think that's a win-win. Um, you get that information in advance, so you're not filling out an application for something if it's not uh, eligible. And then um, on our side as well, um, you know, it's always beneficial to verify in advance if possible at, as we are processing applications on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you are planning to include level two and DC fast chargers on your site, you can apply for both with one application. And in the event that um, your plans change and you do not choose to move forward with a charger type, or if funding is not available for one of those charger types, when we get to your application in, in the queue, then we can always make an adjustment to remove one of those. And um, that is something that we've experienced in the past there is a lot of general interest in DC fast chargers. So we always ask you to apply for, for both if you're planning to, uh, if your goal is to install both DC and level two fast, uh, excuse me, DC fast chargers and level two, and then we can always make an adjustment on our end. So please apply for what you'd like. And if we need to make an adjustment due to a change in your project plan or, a change based on available funding, we can we can do that, but we ask that you apply for what you need. So just wanted to, to stress that point as that's something that we um, are, are constantly um, uh, working on. So if there's any way that, uh, if there are any follow-up questions that you have around eligibility or, or questions you have around your installation, um, please let us know. Um, there's, oh, I just, go ahead. On, on that, I'd really just echo everything uh, you just said, Nicole, and um, maybe add a little to say, again, we really encourage everyone to do their homework. Um, we're not encouraging everyone to apply for the max rebates that you can get of six and 10. If that, if you know you're not going to do that, please don't, don't apply for the max that you're really eligible. We're really expecting people to do their homework ahead of time and really do as much to say, all right, we know we can't get 10 chargers, but maybe we can get eight. So we'll apply for eight. Because again, we want people to be considerate that we know our projects are going to have high interest and oversubscriptions. And if everyone just goes for the highest amount um, and then change it later, you know, we're sitting on applications that we could have funded um but you did a money grab so we're really we don't want people to do money grabs we want you to do your homework ahead of time know what you can handle and apply for that and to the point of um the combo applications if you know you want uh, to try and get the fast charger in level two echoing what nicole said please submit one application for a combo don't submit a, com a combo and then a fast charger only, and then a level two only, because what that's going to do is that's going to extend our processing time for reviewing applications by 30% or 60% because we have two additional applications now that only one's going to get approved, but we have to go through each of these applications then and process them. So please be um, considerate of making Cali VIP stay streamlined by um, doing your homework ahead of time and um, not doing unnecessary items. Great, thank you, Brian. And just looking at time here, I'm gonna wrap up with a couple final questions so that we have time to summarize our contact information and next steps. So thank you all for all, all of these great questions. 
try to get through a couple more here. So uh, there was a question around um, uh, military bases and eligibility. So uh, we know that there are a lot of military bases in San Diego County and uh, military bases are eligible for level two chargers. Um, because they are not accessible um, to the general public 24-7, uh, at this time, military bases are not eligible for DC fast charger installations, um, but would be eligible for level two charger installations. So if you're looking at a site um, specifically on a military base and you have any other follow-up questions around eligibility, uh, we invite you to, to follow up with us so uh, we can answer any open questions you have. And then there was a question um, around uh, existing chargers. So Chris asked if a site has charging stations and wants to replace them with more stations, would that be covered under, under the program? And the short answer is yes. Um, through Cali VIP, uh, replacement chargers are eligible. Um, so you just need to meet our general site eligibility requirements and uh, equipment requirements um, for replacements. For replacements and upgrades, there are some specific requirements related to DC fast chargers. So I invite you to take a look at our implementation manual and uh, that's available on our landing page. Uh, so uh, around replacement chargers, there's a minimum uh, power level that's eligible for replacement. So the idea is uh, we don't want to be uh, incentivizing um, maybe a very fast uh, DC fast charger uh, since our intent is to get more charging stations out there um, but if you have a really low level DC fast charger that might be eligible for replacement so please um, review the replacement requirements uh, related to charger eligibility before uh, applying and follow up with us if you have any questions around eligibility. And to add to that, Nicole, just real quick, I can read it off from the IM. For level two, replacements are allowed only for non-networked EV chargers or older inductive paddle style chargers. Um, so if you have a old network charger that is a J1772, that will not be eligible. Um, only non-networked or paddle style the level twos are eligible for replacement. For fast chargers, that power level is um, for non-network charger, fast chargers, um, and capable of 40 kilowatts or less, or have only one connector. So if you only have a CHAdeMO or a CCS and you want to upgrade it to our standards, that's allowed. But definitely that is available, as Nicole said, on the implementation manual. Great. Thanks for providing that information, Brian, and pulling that up. And then just um, to wrap up with two final questions, um, there was a question asking, will we need to provide the utility account number for the site host? And the answer is no, there's no utility re requirements or eligibility requirements related to utilities for this project. And then um, for a final question before we wrap up and talk about next steps, um, Eduardo had a question around payment and asked, does payment go directly to the facility owner representative or does payment go to the applicant? And for this, I'm assuming you mean rebate payment. And the rebate payment um, determination is up to you. So we have flexibility with Cali VIP. So a site owner can apply or um, a third party representative um, can apply as well. So you can uh, work with your team to determine who will receive the rebate payment and that's the information that we'll be collecting as part of the application. So it'll be important to have the tax identification number for the rebate recipient ready and on hand before you apply. And we'll be going into more details on that application process as part of our pre-launch webinar, um, which will be our next webinar that will uh, be held on October 6th. We'll walk through each step of the application process um, so that you have a preview of that before the project opens 
on October 27th. So with that, I wanna thank you all for your time um, and all of your excellent questions during our question and answer session. And I'd like to transition um, to the next slide to talk about um, some of our next steps. Great, so thank you again for attending today's webinar. To stay up to date on all Cali VIP information, we encourage you to subscribe to a couple of different tools. One of them is the Energy Commission's Cali VIP docket. Through the docket, you can submit public comments, view comments, download our past presentations like our past webinars, and sign up for the Cali VIP email list. So there's, it's linked on this page and will be made available when we share the presentation. Next slide, please. We also encourage you to sign up for the Cali VIP newsletter to receive Cali VIP updates directly from our team. And these updates are related to new projects, upcoming webinars, and 2021 schedule information. You can do so by visiting calivip.org and signing up for the newsletter there. As you take next steps to prepare to apply for the San Diego County Incentive Project, please contact our team if you have any questions. You can contact us via our project email or phone number that's listed here. As, um, as we discussed during the question and answer session, it's very important um, and valuable to have you reach out with questions in advance of applying. So if you have any questions about your eligibility or the rebate amounts that you might qualify for, we ask that you reach out to us and we can verify that information in advance. So that's a time saver um, for you. So you get some time back before applying and you can get all those questions answered so you can be successful on application day. Our applications will open for this project on October 27th. And again, our pre-launch webinar will be held on October 6th, where you'll find out more information about the application process. And in the meantime, we invite you to, to reach out to us with any questions you have. So thank you again um, for attending today's webinar. This concludes our webinar today, and uh, we hope you have a great day. Thank you for attending.